Now we're gonna check out this Sig Sauer P365X Macro today. This is made possible by my buddy John. Appreciate him loaning it for the review today. So if you didn't already know, this is basically an upsized version of the SIG P365, the original. Um, they have a P365 XL, which basically... The P365 XL compared to the standard P365 has a longer slide and barrel, but it also has a longer grip compared to the standard P365, which is about the same length as if you put the 12 round magazine into the standard P365. And then with this X macro here, the barrel length and slide is about the same length as the P365 XL, but the hand grip is longer, which also gives you a higher capacity, which gives you 17 plus one capacity, which is amazing for something this size. This one particularly is the non ported version, which comes with the safety, okay? And uh, part of the reason John went with this, he's a fairly new pistol shooter. He wanted the safety. A lot of guys out there do want the safety, and some people don't. Uh, but that was uh, one deciding factor for him. But another good thing he pointed out, if you get the comp version, it's actually the same overall length, but they shorten your barrel and bring that front sight back to allow for that compensation. So you lose a little bit of barrel length there, thus you lose a little bit of velocity and power. Plus your sight radius isn't going to be as good because that front sight's going to be closer and less larger. So you'll be a little more accurate with the longer sight radius on this. And it's got a little more power and velocity that way as well over the comped version. So I kind of agree with him. I would have went with this over the comped as well. Uh, plus a lot of people don't realize the compensators, so they reduce the recoil, right? They are loud. So if you're to actually use a compensated pistol in a self-defense scenario, um, your ears are going to be bleeding, especially if it's indoors. So the comps are great for like on the range so you can uh, get quicker follow-up shots and they help get you back on target faster and whatnot so you can run through the targets faster with that reduced recoil. But if you're not wearing ear pro, so if you're concealed carrying it and have to use it or use it in your house as a home defense weapon, uh, it being compensated, it's going to be super, super loud. That said, it's not going to be any worse than a centerfire rifle going off. But that's also something that a lot of people don't consider either about their black scary rifle. Uh, using that in home defense, it's going to be really freaking loud. Better than being dead for sure, but something worth mentioning. Uh, but back to the capacity on this, 17 plus 1, like I said, with the standard mags. I'm sure somebody out there by now makes longer ones and whatnot. But this is about the size of a Glock 19, only it's a lot narrower. Glock 19's got like, you know, the grip's like 50% wider there and the slide and all that. So it's much, much narrower than a Glock 19. But overall, the size is very similar to a Glock 19. It's actually a little shorter, but just a, a tad longer in the grip here. Big part of that's because of that mag sticking out there. Um, but barely any longer top to bottom from the grip here than a Glock 19. So it's a compact 9mm size, but while being much thinner than most compact 9s, yet it gives you a full-size 9mm magazine capacity. Your safety here, ambidextrous. Okay, slide lock, slide release is not. You take down pins on this side. As you can see there, I've got a flat face trigger with this. I love these grips. Real, real good texture. They go all the way around. You got your tack rail there. Excellent grip on the slide front and rear serrations there. I already showed, but there is your sight picture. These are glow-in-the-dark tritium front and rear. They, to me, look identical to their regular P365 sights. They might be slightly upscaled due to the larger pistol, but they're the exact same sights other than that. And they may be the exact same size anyways. So there's your sight picture on that. Okay, not getting a focus, but that's what you're looking at there. As you can already see, and this is not my dominant hand, this gun is very, very steady in the hands. Also, the trigger has a little creep, and I'll show that in just a second. But this thing is dead steady, even with that trigger creep. I'll pull through now. As you can see there, it didn't move on me whatsoever. Okay, get the reset for you real quick. So the reset, it feels pretty short, but it's actually because it, it kind of like has a force feedback You'll see what I mean here in a second. I guess not. It's a pretty short re uh, reset there. So there's the trigger reset. And then we'll pull through. You'll see the creep. 
before the bang. And I do like a little bit of creep on a carry gun, especially one that does not have a trigger safety. Uh, that way, if you accidentally hit it or if you're staging it in preparation for a life and death situation where you actually have a little bit of time to prepare, um, sometimes you get a little overzealous and uh, accidentally pull through. And when you don't mean to, it actually happens to cops a lot, accidental discharge, because they're sitting there staging their trigger because they don't know if they're about to have to shoot or not. And uh, with the pressure, excitement, whatever you would call it, they accidentally pull through and break. Uh, so it's nice to have that little bit of creep on a carry gun such as this is intended to be. As for the, there's your take up there. As for the pull weight, I'll look up the specs, but it feels eh, right around five pounds, give or take half a pound or so. And your mag release here, as you can see there, you can swap it to whichever side you prefer. We'll get to shooting here. I do have a one partial mag I put through this the other day. I was out here with John and his buddy, and we were shooting. Um, I don't think it was a full mag, if I remember correctly, but. Um, we already checked the sights and it's dead zeroed right out of the box at least this example is and it has what i call a cover hold so a six o'clock hold a lot of pistols will have a six o'clock hold and what that means is you line your sights up properly appropriately and you kind of aim at the bottom of the target like that and then your bullet will go a few inches higher than that and the purpose behind that is so you can actually see your target while you're aiming at it instead of covering it up like that and then a center hold is where it just buzzes, the bullet buzzes right over that front blade, like a rifle sight. So you would hold kind of like that. And this has what I call a cover hold, where the bullet goes right where that green dot is on the front there. So you actually have to cover your target with that. Uh, but other than that, the windage was perfect. It was straight. There was no left and right variance. It's just uh, shooting kind of low. Uh, but it's, it's a uh, cover hold. It, the bullet goes right where that green dot is, which honestly for a self-defense scenario on a concealed carry weapon, that's, in my opinion, is better. You see the dot and you pull it, which is what most people are going to do instinctively anyway. So for me, at least in my hands with this example, I got a, uh, the bullet's going right where the green dot is. But I'll finally shut up. We'll start shooting here. And one last note, you do have a little uh, window there if this would focus where you can see whether you have a loaded chamber or not. Oh, and optics ready. <laughs> gong there is usually hanging from the hook and yeah, she broke on me today <laughs> I gotta reweld it I'm gonna stand freehand back here in that back row laser range finder confirmed 15 yards and those bowling pins back there they're about the size of a well a headshot so we'll do a slow steady fire back here at 15 yards and see if we can pick these off without missing Well, I'm going a little too fast, but now that I'm going fast and missing, I wouldn't miss any of those if I slowed down a little. Let's see if I can pick these two off real quick. So one other thing I'm noticing while firing here, and if you guys were paying attention, you would have caught it by now, but uh, the mags on this, if you slam them in hard enough on the reload, uh, the slide automatically goes forward and chambers around. Some people like that, some people don't. Let me get a quick capture of that in case you missed it. And the other thing regarding the mags, um, I can get 15 in no problem, just with my thumb. 16's a little hard, and that last one I'm finding practically impossible without using the assist that they provide. And also, 
should have mentioned this at the beginning of the video uh, but you can you have interchangeable back straps here it comes with three different ones so you can also change the grip to your preference as well so I'm gonna go out there run a mag at seven yards see how quickly I can knock these down when we first started I was at 10 yards so I'm gonna walk up there and try that out see how quick I can get them all down and then we'll head down to the rifle range to wrap this up and hopefully uh well, I should be able to get at least 50 yard hits, no problem. And if she's 100 yard worthy, that'll probably be a separate video, as I always do. <laughs> a couple of those I, I nicked and they didn't fall so they were hits but no falls I think I actually did miss twice though but I mean I was trying to go as fast as I could so I, I think I had two misses and two nick hits so I did hit but they didn't fall uh, but as you can see this thing runs fast that was seven yards which is what they say your typical self-defense scenario ends up being on average about seven yard distance 21 feet and those are small targets and this thing just ate them up I mean, I'm really digging this thing. It was brand new out of the box when we uh, shot it a few days ago. Got between 50 and 100 rounds through it the other day. Probably closer to 100, honestly. I know I'm going to be over 50 in this video approaching 100, so it's been absolutely flawless. No issues there. Uh, but yeah, full-size 9mm capacity and something that's much smaller, especially much more narrow, much lighter, and it runs just as good as a full-size. This thing is amazing. I'm loving this gun. All right, here we got the rifle range. Got my 16 inch gong there at 50. I'll try some free handed there and then my 20 inch at 100 there. I'll use this little rest for that. You see water kick up a few times here, but just listen, you can hear it hitting the plate. The water kicking up is just from the fragmenting bullet hitting the puddle down there. Well, there you have it. She's 100 yard capable. And you guys get spoiled and get it in the uh, review video as well. So that'll conclude the review today. If you didn't skip through the video clear to the end, then you already know what I think of it. Want to get any of the products you see me use in the videos, like my paper targets, steel targets, shooting bag, more. Links in the description. Again, big thanks to John for loaning it for the review today. Appreciate you guys stopping by and checking this one out. And I hope to see you on the next one.